Hello, hello, how are we? It is great to have you back. Today we have a very interesting topic with a very lovely friend of mine, Shoma. You will have seen us before presenting on my podcast and on my YouTube channel. Shoma is professional in helping people create memoirs, bi memoirs, memoirs, biographies, autobiographies, writing your life story, writing somebody else's life story. And we are so lucky to have here today. So Shoma, welcome. We are going to be talking all about how to write your own memoir. Thank you for coming and joining us today. Thank you, Sarah. It's so lovely to see you again and uh, be here with you. Uh, you're a multiple best-selling author, so you know you, you've been there, done that, you know it all. But I'm so happy to be here presenting to your audience um, a little bit about how to write memoirs and why you really should be writing your memoirs. Fantastic. And, uh, you know, it's just for everyone else knows, so Shoma and I actually go back a few years. Um, Shoma created an online course on writing a memoir and autobiography back about five years ago with me. Um, and that's sort of how we, we got into each other's sphere of influence, because writing books and creating courses do actually have some very similar and common ways of putting content together, finding out what it is that you want to say, figuring out how to actually articulate that, how to organize and structure it in a way that other people can engage with it, enjoy it, listen to it, understand it, become enthralled and engaged in that experience of, of reading. Um, and so Shoma and I have, have uh, been referring clients and customers to each other quite some time. So um, yeah, Shoma, first of all, just really briefly, just give us a little bit of information. I mean, you've got an incredible background in, in journalism, in writing you've got a huge amount of authors behind you that you have actually helped extract their memoirs their autobiographies and biographies from them um yeah can you give us a little quick overview of uh, of your skills and background there okay yeah so yeah you're right um so my background is media and journalism and um i suppose i've been a journalist for i don't know over 30 years now I'm still a member of the australian associated press but uh, i'm not in active journalism anymore so I was what you would call a human interest features writer and editor um, for a very, very long time. And um, that's where my interest in people's stories come from, because as a human interest features writer and editor, my job was to go out and interview personalities and, you know, whether they were film or sports or politicians and extract their story. And then they would go out into an article, you know, like a Sunday Times magazine or something like that. But what I learned when I went in for these interviews, it was a 20 minute, 30 minute um, interview appointment. And they often lasted for hours. I'd be sitting there two or three hours there, listening to this person who I barely knew, giving them, giving me their life story because you just, you know, they kept going back and they're telling me, and I'm thinking, you know, I've just come here for this five, 10 minute thing and you've told me your whole life story. So what goes into making a person that person? That's what really got me started. Mm. Which is amazing. And done some incredible books. Yeah, over the it years. It is great. And, you know, this is one of the things that I'm always saying to people is everyone's got a story to tell, right? I mean, everyone has been through experiences that somebody else can learn from. As everyone's been through experiences that can make other people not feel alone if they're going through similar experiences. Yeah. Everyone else can share their life story. You know, people, people will say, you know, oh, I've got nothing interesting to say. Like, you have been through stuff that will make people laugh their heads off. You have, you've gone through stuff that are going to entertain people. You've been through things that other people have been through that's going to make them feel like they also are not alone. You have been through things that have taught you stuff that are going to go and help other people uh, in the future. You know, I saw a really lovely mem today saying um, what you write today, if you share your experiences and what you've been through, can become somebody else's spiritual guide. It can become somebody else's survival guide. And this is what's so great about stories. So at the moment, the reason we're here is I actually have my, my current book challenge running. Um, I teach people how to create nonfiction books. Um, and my, my current challenges are creating their books right now in 30 days. But a lot of people want to talk about their life stories their 
and life experiences, where they've been, where they've come from, what they've learned from those life experiences. Uh, and that's not necessarily my expertise. I'm not a memoir uh, writing instructor, but Shoma is. So today, Shoma, I know that you've got some slides, some information you're going to actually share with us some tips today on where do we start? You know, um, one thing that, you know, I know that you teach and that I say to people who are creating education programs and who are writing books, you know, you don't have to be old and dying on your deathbed to write a memoir or a biography, right? You do not have to have, you know, accomplished some giant mission, you know, like climbing up Mount Everest naked on the back of a goat in order to be able to have something valuable to say, right? <laughs> we all have something cool. And, you know, we can write our life stories just that are literally from what we've learned up until now, however we are old we are today, we can share that life so far, you know, and then go on and write more after that. So I'd love to know, Shoma, if somebody listening today is thinking, I really do want to write my story, or I want to want to help somebody else write their story, where do we begin? Like, can you share with us what, what your tips are for getting a life story Absolutely. out of their heads and onto a page? And you're so right. Like there's no right time or wrong time or an old time to write your story. Your story is happening now. So and these stories are so beneficial to someone who can relate to your, you know, whether it's a pain or a triumph or something that you've gone to gone through. And when people can relate to that, that's when they connect with your story. That's when it gets anchored in and, you know, you're changing lives. So if you're okay with that, and Sarah um, and the, you know, your audience is watching this, a lot of the stuff I'm going to share is what I did with Sarah five years ago when she helped me turn my, um, you know, book and this whole idea into a course. And uh, I can't believe that was five years ago. I was thinking it was more like two or three years ago. <laughs> yes, that's a long time. But so I'm going to... Uh, thank you for um, sharing screens. And so I'm going to run through um, on screen. I do hate PowerPoint, but um, I think this is a good medium because you'll be able to see. And like I say, words will anchor uh, what I'm going to say. And I could talk about this all day for a whole week and I would still wouldn't finish. But what I've done is uh, collapse the information into bite-sized pieces and uh, so that you'll be able to um, understand better, you know, get get an overview of what it is to write a memoir. Um, at the end of it, there are some freebies which um, Sarah has very kindly said that I can offer. You can have them. Uh, those will give you an insight. It's going to be uh, a few of the things that I'm going to teach here, but you can download them and keep them with you forever. And if they help you write the memoir, that'll be wonderful. So I call it Memories Make Me. And I call it that because we are our memories, the DNA in us. It's not just us, but we are carrying our memories from our ancestors, from our grandmothers, our grand grandparents, and all this is gene memory that's within you and you are car carrying it. There's scientific evidence of that fact. Um, and a lot of the things we do, the habits we have, the way we respond to people, there's a lot of evidence that it all comes down, some from the environment, but a lot of it from um, our gene memory. And that's why I call it Memories Make Me. So let me get started with this and I'm going to start with a little story. And this is something I heard when I was on a, um, well, we were on a family holiday in Africa and uh, we went to a Maasai village and uh, there was this Maasai village headman sitting there with this beautiful headgear and um, he was just watching us tourists in his village. And so, being a journalist, I just walked up to him because I'm always curious. I want to know stuff. And I started talking to him. And he spoke Swahili. I spoke English. So we were you know, using hand gestures. Then uh, about a 13, 14-year-old boy came along and he started interpreting for us. And the, the chieftain, the, this Maasai tribesman, um, who was obviously the village head, he asked me, what do you do? And so I told him, I write. 
So that's all I do, I write. And he then said this to me. He said, we have a saying in our village, whenever an elder dies, a library burns to the ground. And that just hit me like a ton of bricks. Like all my years up to that point, it must have been like 20 years that I'd been collecting stories, writing stories, interviewing people. And that's what really got me that we are all stories. But if we don't record them, if we don't keep them for posterity, they're going to be lost. And we are creating history. We are, this is our social lives, you know, the fabric of our lives are being written down in a book and again Sarah you'll agree with me why I'm so passionate about books even in this day of Instagram stories and reels and you know videos and snapchats they're all transient even when you create a video you it's not really archived in a national archive where you can pull it up at the flick of a finger but a book can a book, mm -hmm. once it has that ISBN, is catalogued in the National Library of your country and anyone anywhere in the world, especially with self-published books, as you know, all you need to do is go online and you can download it, you can buy it, and you have that book. So long after we're gone, 200 years later, you used to search for Sarah Cordona and she's there. Her books are there, her words are there. It is a legacy, isn't it? It really is. And I, I sort of look back at, you know, my, my grandparents, who none of which are no longer with me, and I kind of sit and wish that they'd written their story. I wish that they had shared their memories, their lives and the things that they've been through, you know, the good, the bad and the ugly of all of it, because I don't really have a great idea as to where I've come from. I'm a gypsy, I was born gypsy, and I have this incredibly interesting, fascinating background. And unfortunately there was any glimpses of that I managed to capture and learn about who I am and where I've been and where I've come from, um, based on the few things that my grandmother got to tell me before she passed away. And, you know, we, we're, the next, we're that next step in our generation you know, we're going to have children or grandchildren or nieces or nephews or, you know, people are going to come after us who will be interested in what we've lived through. Uh, it's so easy, I think, sometimes for us to look at our lives, particularly at the moment where we're stuck in inside and locked down and think, well, I don't have anything interesting to say. My life isn't interesting. I'm not interesting. It is it is. I mean, literally, look at what we're going through right now. We are literally going through and living through a global pandemic. We're in an internet revolution. We're at the revolution, the first generation to ever go through the world of the internet. We're going through sociological and societal changes that, you know, no one could have predicted that in 10 years time, people are going to look back and say, how did you get through that? What was it like living through that transitional period? You know, perhaps there are things going on in your life that nobody else knows about right now that are, are sheltered by your darkness, your feelings, your, your circumstances, the four walls that you live in, you know, whatever it might be that in five, 10, 15 years time is going to be an incredible insight into who you were and who you are now and where you come from and how you evolved from that. And the, I have found that simply writing it down is not only therapeutic, you know, it is literally therapy writing out your thoughts, your feelings and your experiences. But it is interesting to other people and it is helpful to other people. And why not? I mean, why not? Why not write it down? You are doing the world a favor by, you know, putting your words down. Because look at us, when the pandemic struck, we were Googling the Spanish flu, which happened 100 years ago. And if people hadn't written about it, hadn't captured that history, where would we be? We wouldn't have anything, any documentation. But, and, and that's so important. Just the fact that you're a gypsy, that to me is such an exotic thing. I mean, I would die to capture your story and put it out there. Like, you know, I think 100% of your audience would want to know what happened. And I so, think you and I are going to need to spend some more time together, Shoma. <laughs> <laughs> so, by the way, you know, just in case anyone didn't know that. You know, to the next, next guy, um, thing that is, People often ask exactly what you said. Do I really have a story? That's what most people come and tell me when I run these classes or I'm speaking on stage. And I, I, I'm just an ordinary human being. I don't do anything, you know, I, I don't do anything exciting. Do I really have a story? And then there are other people who say, I have an amazing story. But remember that no matter what you do, no matter how mundane your life is, there are stories happening within our lives, our day-to-day -day lives. We don't think of it like that. But if you sit back 
and you know i do an exercise with you where we are, you're capturing all the things that you do and then put them together you'll see there's a story but the biggest question i have oh okay and then there is a group of people who come to me saying i have an amazing story i have they have a crying need to tell that story and both these two groups, the one who says, do I really have a story? And the ones that say, I have an amazing story, have one problem. And that is how do I put it all down in a book? You have all these memories, all these swirling um, you know, mm -hmm. thoughts, dialogues, incidents that have happened. But how do you capture it into a book that is unputdownable? And that's your word, Sarah. You had said, "How do you make a put? Uh, how do you make a book unput down? But how do you start and then keep reading? What is it that makes a book a page turner?" There are certain formulas. There are, you know, as with everything, there's an art and a craft to it. And once you learn the craft, the art which is within you will flow. And then we, you know, you do it, I do it. We facilitate that kind of. Um, uh, you know, extraction the process. Yeah, how to get people get yeah, their idea out of their heads. Mm -hmm. So another big question that most people ask is what is the difference between, you know, what is a memoir? What's what's an autobiography? What a biography? They're all stories of your life, right? So what is the difference? So very quickly, an autobiography focuses on the trajectory of your entire life. It's usually based on historical flags and, you know, all of these are, but they're more linear in an autobiography. And you go from, you know, when you were born or when you were little to um, chronologically till whatever time you want to go to. And that's, and you just describe all the events. A biography, on the other hand, is usually similar, but it's usually written by someone else. Usually the uh, biographies are of famous people. Um, you know, it could be Obama or Gandhi or whoever, and it's written by someone like you or me who's a journalist or, you know, a writer, and they go and interview the person and put it into a book. So I love that it. And I think a lot of the people looking and at this at the moment, I think maybe in the position of writing these memoirs, you know, we've we've got a lot of course creators, coaches, consultants, experts listening today. Um, raise your hands in the comments and let us know what you're an expert in while you're listening. Um, you know, focusing on in a particular moment, a particular point, a key lesson, a key turning point, what it was in your life that made you decide to become an educator, a facilitator, a coach, a consultant, a leader in whatever your topic is. You know, what was that tipping point that made you go, I'm going to go and help people with this particular thing in this particular topic you know, there's a story behind that there's a story behind why we chose to become the people that we are why we chose the professions that we chose why we stay in it when some days you know it's tough it's hard everything comes with its heavy burden its heavy loads and you know, why do we care so much about what we do I mean that alone is such a fascinating read um, and, and at the same time it also catapults our business it catapults our brand it, it, it lifts our credibility even further to, to to share that stuff yeah and you know what like people humans are innately curious people i want to know what's happening behind you know oh, the sarah cordner or someone else what are their lives like what is it that motivated her to come to this position to become a world-renowned person or you know what is it that really makes her tick and that's what humans relate to humans and a memoir is something that you pick a point in your life and focus on that and everything else revolves around it so you're you're absolutely spot on if you're listening to this think about it you know what is it that really grabs you you know really makes you who you are and why did you do it I really like the concept of the memoir as well, because in a way, um, it, you know, you don't have to have this one monumental single experience um, that, you know, becomes almost, a, you know, you can, you can break down lots of different memories, lots of different key points, lots of, and, and create a series of memoirs, right? You know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. My, one of my clients, and um, she was only 22, and she knows I won't mind. Her book is out there. It's called Beautiful. Her name is Emily Strange. She was going through a traumatic time. And in she was in Broome, incidentally, a couple of years ago when she tried to self-harm 
and the police found her on a beach, brought her back. And then she was introduced to me by one of her therapists who um, thought I could take her through this journey of writing. So writing is also cathartic. And we did uh, like uh, eight or 10 months of writing and that then became a book. And she is now on ABC radio. She is now on you know, SBS, ABC on everywhere telling people how to get over these suicidal ideations, how to get, you know, and so it's it's wow. one book, one memoir that did it. That's not only anyway. helped her heal, she's now helping other people who are going through that. I mean, yeah, this is the power of sharing your story. Incredible. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the commercial aspect aside, that alone, the ability to purge all your thoughts um, in a book, even if you don't want to publish it, is amazing. Um, there was one, there's one I am doing, um, probably shouldn't make it public, but it is with someone who has an addiction. The person has been um, in prison for many, many years, come out, goes back in, and he's just doing it to get it out. There's no publishing. There's no nothing at the end of it, but he's doing it just to get the story out. But anyway, uh, the Atai is so I'll go through this very quickly. This is really uh, the basis of any storytelling. It's a memoir. It's your story. But this works for fiction. This works for um, a business book that you need a kind of formula. What makes a Netflix, you know, something that you binge watch. Why do you binge watch it? Just think about it. Or why do you pick up some book and read it cover to cover? Why is it so engrossing? Whereas there are other books that you could read 10 pages and then it just doesn't grab you. So what is it that secret sauce that makes a book or a movie? Remember, a movie is first a book before it becomes a movie. So you know, it's, it's a script first. So it is what we go back to calling, um, it's called narrative arc, it's called Freight Act's Pyramid. It, it's been there forever. It was Aristotle who actually uh, sort of, you know, put it down, formulated it. But a German scientist called Freytag, Gustav Freytag, um, put it in this uh, sort of pyramid illustration form. I'm going to try and see if I can share that now. Uh, this is this is Freytag's pyramid. You can Google this anywhere, and it just shows it, that if you, when you begin a story, you start with uh, an inciting moment. You set the scene basically. So in your memoir, you have to give people a background. You don't have to start from a scratch from when you were born and you know how you went through primary school and all of that, but give them a setting of who you are where you're coming from do it with a hook you know a, a little story that hooks the reader in once you've done that then you can start expanding on this and what that's what we call the rising actions or complications like your life you you came to where you are because you had to travel a certain path and i'm sure no one's path is smooth um, we are there are hurdles there are things we go through that's what makes us as we are and those are your subsequent chapters. Then you come to the climax, which is, you know, the crucial point in your book. Um, and that is where the reader, you know, it brings the reader to that height of anticipation, what's going to happen now. After that is the downside of the triangle, which where you start unraveling or if it's a uh, you know, in a case of a memoir, what made you what you were, what were the results that happened after that? And then you round off the book with a resolution or denouement where you're tying up all the loose ends. And, you know, it's like a movie where you go away, walk away feeling satisfied, hopefully, that you've had <laughs> watched it, you got your money's worth. And um, this is the basic, very, very basic um, uh, formula for any good story to work. Um, do you have any questions, Sarah? Or do I? Do yeah, and you know, having you know, seen seen a lot of uh, books come out of our combined clients together. You know, there's the, the going back to that sort of step one. I think people find the hardest bit is actually starting. Um, you know, they like you say, we know our story, we know what, what we want to say more than anything. There's so much of it, it's so overwhelming. It is where do we begin? So that's step one you had on the previous slide with the opening scene. Um, you know, 
there, there's a number of different ways, I guess, to, to start with that. I always find that um, when I'm trying to be inspired, I pick up a book that's a bit like the one I want to write. If it's got the theme that I want to kind of share, the the overall message, um, look at the first few pages and you'll often find, particularly when it comes to fiction, I find fiction that the best for inspiring this is where you know either there's like some dramatic opening scene, um, something terrible, something scary, something like, oh my gosh, it makes you want to turn that first page to go, how did this happen? What is going on? <laughs> Why is this happening? to this person um alternatively it could be the flip side you know it could be this beautiful happy moment it could almost start at the end you know there's this enlightened person that's been through this experience that's got through some kind of trauma they're living their best life and they can't believe they survived and you're like survived what you know and then you know you go from the happy to let's go back to to this journey that this person's actually been through so i guess there's there's a lot of different ways to start a story but I, I, and again, there's no right or wrong here, but I'm just going to share with some of the ways that I try to begin things is I try to begin with, you know, particularly when it comes to this memoir theme, if we're talking about one particular theme, we're talking to course creators, educators, coaches and things here. If you want to write a story, whether you're going to write it in a nonfiction format, tips, information, or you're going to write it more in a, a narrative or a, or a story format like a memoir, you can, you can be quite clever in, in how you how you begin. But I always go, what is it that I really want to get across from this story or from this information? How do I want this person to feel at the end of it? What kind of subconscious lesson do I want them to walk away with? You know, is it is it the, the, the thing, let's say your memoir thing that you're writing about is about a challenging experience you got through. And for you, the main thing, the main lesson that you've learned from that yourself is resilience. Well then how are you gonna kind of paint that picture on the first page? That they're here as a resilient person, uh, but how did they gain resilience? They gained resilience because they defeated the odds because they were, you know, went through some battle. And the and the, the readers will be like, what battle? What happened? <laughs> I want to learn about this resilience thing too. You know, maybe the theme is self-confidence or self-belief. Maybe the theme is overcoming addiction, you know, that we can change our, our, our you know, patterns of behavior. Um, so I always start with that. What is that initial theme that is going to run through the entire story or the entire set of tips and information? And what do I want them to to walk away with that one key lesson at the end and one key feeling you know um and and that can help you pick the opening once you start writing it's it does kind of flow it flows from there you've just got to get that initial part off the ground I mean, any tips for, from you Shoma on yeah, you know yeah. how else people can get started yeah and, and that you know segues really nicely into these seven basic mm. plot lines because remember um even when you're writing out your memoir to a person reading it, they're reading a story. They're reading your life story. It's, you know it all, but they don't, right? So they're going to read it almost like a fiction book. And fiction writers know this, that the hook, hooking them in what you just talked about in that first few, those first few pages is what's going to make your reader stay. So what is it, those, what can you use as a hook? And that's what I'm coming to, the basic plot lines, is humans are have a few basic emotions, right? And I'm going to, this is a very, there are the very, you know, five basic elements of storytelling. I'm not going to go into that because this will take another, you know, a few sessions to do this. There's the plot, the setting, characters, conflict, theme, all of these come in even into memoir, but I won't dwell on those um any of you or if they want to know more they can contact me and i'll run them through this but these are some of the basic storylines that humans relate to it's it's the you know whatever you call them five seven universal truths or whatever overcoming the monster what is it in case of a memoir for an entrepreneur, what is it? I'm terrified of speaking on stage. How did I get there? Then I became this, you know, really well-known speaker on stage. Maybe I was a stutterer and I overcame that. How did I do it? The rags to riches story. We hear this all the time from, you know, well-known entrepreneurs who've been selling pizzas and then are suddenly making, you know, a few million dollars a month. The quest that you've been after, the voyage and return, you know, funny stuff if you want to. That's, comedy is one of the hardest things to write about. It's very, very hard. Tragedy is much easier, trust me. And then, of course, rebirth when you've been something and you've evolved into something else. 
And the other things that your memoir will make people relate are the primary emotions that move us, which is love, loss, death, fear, power. We are all, all of us, irrespective of where we are at what station in our lives, these are the emotions that move us. And in your story, as you write your story, whether it's an entrepreneurial memoir or whether it's a personal memoir, I can assure you, you know, it's going to encompass at least one or all of these. Because that's the argument. And once you and do I, this, um, yeah. I was going to say just about uh, going back to that one. I find that the um, you know the the death one can be quite an interesting one to play with because you know it could literally mean the death of a person, a loved one, a, a pet, or or something. But it can also mean the death of our old selves. You know, it could be, it could be I'm no longer that person. You know, I used to be this. I used to do that. I used to see life this way. That person is gone. That person is dead. You know, it could be the the death of a business. It could be the you know I look back at some at my story. You know, there was that day when I was running everything corporate my big offices my 23 employees I lost 2.7 million dollars in a day and almost had to shut my entire business down that was the death of the old way I did business that was what moved me online you know that's because I literally was facing this graveyard of uh, of poor business decisions you know um it's it's a very very interesting way you know the, the death of old our old life uh, it, it's we can really play around with these themes to to yeah. inspire it is. And, you know, even in the last slide, when I said rebirth or voyage and return, that's what it was. That it is. It doesn't have to be a physical death of someone. It can be. But more like you're saying, we are all, always evolving. You know, the old Shoma dies and someone else is, comes forward because of circumstances. Mm. And those are the things, again, I keep saying, saying this, but it's so important that the reader relates to you. When we watch a movie, you start becoming the hero or the heroine. Like when you're you're in a uh, state of suspended animation, if you know what I mean, like you're becoming that. And that's what you want your book to do. So let the reader identify with you. Again, there are so many things here that we need to, you know, when we're writing, we look at creating strong characters, vivid scenes, emotional tension, drama and conflict, satisfying ending. And it all sounds, oh my God, how am I going to do this in a book? I can't do all this. I can just write my story. But trust me, as you write your story, you will see that your truths are all these things. There will be scenes, there will be tension because none of our lives are smooth. When you talk about you know, things that happen to you, um, Talk about what happened, you know, the drama, the conflict. Drama and conflict are not just physical. They happen in your head as well. So talk about those things. Should I do this? Should I not? You know, all of that comes into a book. Then, of course, this character action and plot and all of that. Again, the time is too short to go into this, but those are the things that make up a book. Conflict is one of the biggest things that moves a book and makes your memoir or business book or whatever it is that you're writing fiction a page turning thing. Because when a human is faced with a dilemma, usually the stronger one is an ethical dilemma. Like for you, Sarah, you lost, you said 2.4 million in a day. And what seven, yeah. did you, I can't even imagine that. Like what I would. I don't know what I would do, like walk into the ocean or something and never. <laughs> I threw up in the waste paper basket and drank a lot of red wine that night. <laughs> but can you talk about the, think about the things that were going on through your head? Like, how am I going to get out of this? Yeah, what is that and the ethical dilemmas dilemma? for me came in, you know, I had these staff, I had their families that depended on the income that they earned from me. And it was my, there's my accountant saying, Sarah, you have to put the business into administration. You have to, no one can survive this. And then I'm going, but I can't, these people depended on me. You know, I created this, I am the leader. I, I led us into this situation. I need to lead myself out. These people, these lives, my dream are all hinging on me having made the right or the wrong decisions. Yeah, and so I had this ethical dilemma and in the 
end, I, I phoned up my account and I said, I will not go into administration. <laughs> I will find a way to walk myself out of this. Um, yeah, and it's this is where, you know, here I am today. I'm still, I survived, obviously. <laughs> I got through it. I went online and, uh, and saved the business. But here we go. It's, it's interesting. It's, it's very, very interesting. And this is what like people, you know, when you write your memoir, and I hope you do someday, people are going to be enthralled by how you did it. And it's not just enthralled because you're teaching people. Because people, when they read that, also understand that if you can do it, I can do it too. I can go through that too. And that's such an important message in any book or memoir, especially, uh, because you are now impacting lives through your story and through your struggles. Then, of course, there's, you know, the rounding off, which I talked about. That's that's the easy part, putting bringing all the strings together and finishing your first draft. This is one thing I'm going to tell you. And, you know, Sarah, you've been telling your students as well. The first draft is probably, in a sense, your worst draft and your best draft. Because it's your best draft because your raw emotions and everything that you are has poured out into those pages. But it's also your worst draft because you're going to now start polishing it. Because it's going to be, you know, there are going to be holes in it. There are going to be uh, holes in the storyline, in the narrative, in the way your grammar, your punctuation. But don't worry about all of that in your first draft. The first draft is where you put everything down. It's like, you know, a sculpture takes a piece of rock and starts chiseling. The rock is nothing like it's what it's going to look like at the end of, you know, a piece when he's finished, but he keeps chiseling away at it. And that's what we come to next is, so once you've written the first draft, where do you go from here? And I won't dwell too much on this because Sarah will take you through this, you know, in her, in your book course, I'm sure, is the editing process and, you know, how many types of editing there are, how you do it all of that then there's the publishing process which she will take you through again there are so many options it's not just traditional and self-publishing now there's hybrid publishing there's all these other you know areas of the world has opened up you can sit at your desk and you know uh, sort of pump out books every few months if you want to there's all these things that you go through query letters book proposals synopsis if you're going for traditional publishing and these are things, again, that can't be discussed in a you know, one-hour thing, but they will, uh, you can go through them. And then this is what Sarah's best at and what I've learned so much from her is the marketing of your, I still suck at marketing, but mm -hmm. when your memoir is ready, it's been edited professionally. And I do um, stress on the fact that, yes, we can all write a book and we can all put it up on Amazon within minutes, but if it's not edited well, if it's not really, you know, there are no typos, you don't want to read, take a book and find it full of spelling mistakes and things like that, then you're doing your readers a disservice because you owe them a good book, right? So do get it professionally edited. Um, I would suggest not by your mom and teacher and whatever it is. Um, simply because while they have the, your best interests at heart, they are not the professional. Um, an editor looks at it in a very different way. An editor looks at the marketability of the book, whether the book, you know, what genre it is, how the story stands, looks a developmental editor will look at it from a 30,000 feet view and tell you whether the story is working. A copy editor will look at all the little nuances in the book, anachronisms or you know there was one story that came to me where um the client had written she's talking about her grandmother in the 40s and there's a scene where she puts in um she picked up her mobile phone and punched in the numbers that was the sentence and I said, there were no mobile phones in the 1940s <laughs> it is, so those are things we don't realize but that's what editors pick up um, so do get it, do get it um, edited at least once by a professional editor. And then, of course, there are, they will do the proofreading as well. When it comes to marketing, there are book launches, media releases, social media, website, community. That's nothing I, you know, that I can tell you that is <laughs> Sarah will do a much, much better job of telling you this. But this is just what happens. Um, 
here are just a quick glimpse of we've done lots and lots of books um but these are just a few ones uh, memoirs amazing ones um they're all west australian apart from uh wings of a woman which was a world um, around the world thing they're all west australian memoirs um and yeah that's that's about it you know we, we're all storytellers now and um at the end of this you're most welcome to get these I've put together a 10 point checklist to write memoirs uh the memories make me ebook which is actually a, an ebook a snapshot of the everything that i've gone through but in much more detail because there is no you know they can go through and everything is explained all these slides and then there's a book mapping blueprint if you want it which again takes you through the whole process of how to write your memoirs how to put together chapter wise and um yeah so very generous I offer so I've uh, I've just put in the comments there, and if you guys would like to get those gifts uh, very kindly being offered by Shoma, uh, please put in the comments, me or yes, please, and uh, we'll make sure that uh, Shoma gets in touch with you and sends you the uh, message with the information in there. Shoma, that's cool. really interesting. And of course, you know, this is literally just an overview of, of some of the key mm -hmm. things to yeah. think about rather than, you know, the actual instructions that we could go into in this. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I find fascinating about you is that you actually provide this um, memoir writing as a service you know so we can literally sit down with you over a you know period of months and you help pull those stories those memories those key turning points those lessons out of us for us <laughs> and help yes. that actually get written um so you know please do reach out to Shoma um if you are uh, interested in perhaps her services um you also have online courses Shoma on on writing memoirs um can people find you so you know I know you've got a Facebook group um how can people find you to to Get yeah, so there's a Facebook group called From Blank Page to Bestseller, and um, you can come on there. I keep putting in, uh, you know, free tips, resources, uh, lives, and um, uh, and you can ask questions. You can get in touch with me um, any which way. And um, yeah, and my well, I will mention this, although I said I wouldn't. Uh, my website is being redone, but once it's done, you can go to shomavitra.com and you'll find a heap of resources there. So yeah, those, those are the fantastic. Things. And my course runs for about 12 weeks, the memoir course. So in that time, you come out with all the learnings where I go really deep. And then at the end of it, you get your first draft. And then we take it from there with the editing, publishing, all of that. Uh, amazing. And I know that it's an amazing course because I was part of helping Shoma uh, pull that for oh, what yeah. she does every day into uh, her online teachings. So um, really, really good. And, and look, I guess from today, thank you for the inspiration because a lot of us think, you know, we, we'll wait another day, we'll wait for another day. And look, however old you are now, that's how many years worth of stories you have. And there are stories in every single day. I've published 14 books. I'm working on my next four or five at the moment. <laughs> One of the things that um, I've really, really learned about writing is to try to see the world as, as a creative. Try to see the world as an artist, see the world as a writer, and you see a completely different world. You see a story in literally everything. This lipstick on my desk, you know, what's the story behind this? Why did the girl who bought this decide she needed it? You know, what, what does it do? What does it enable her to think or feel? You know, there's a story in this, in this, you know, there's a story in this pen. There's a story in everything. I was, you know, I was literally looking around my garden last night and I thought if I'm just you know there I was bored waiting for time to pass and I thought how about I I just blink my eyes a couple of times and look at this garden as a writer and I saw the beautiful yellow flowers and it reminded me of being a, a five-year-old girl making buttercup daisy chains in the garden you know there's the story it was right in front of me um and I think the more of us that get to look at the world as writers, as creators, as artists, we have a completely different life. And we help other people have different lives too by being able to translate those visions, those thoughts, those memories, those experiences into something else that connects with another person. And there's nothing more magic than that in my eyes. Absolutely. And, you know, going back to what you first said first, there's no age gap. There's my youngest client is 12 years old. My oldest client wow. is 87 years old. She's in the UK. She is a cybernetics professor. She was mayor of 
some borough, I can't remember now. And she has um, this distinction of being able to stand in for the queen on certain occasions. She's 87 wow. and she's doing a fabulous job of writing her memoirs. So there's no age, you can be anything as long as you'd like to tell your story. So absolutely yeah, fabulous. all your clients to write, whether it's a memoir, a business book or whatever it is, put your words down, your thoughts down, you're leaving a legacy. Thank you, Shoma. So I really hope that you've all been inspired, been given some ideas or some little starting points from today's information. You can go to shomamitra.com. That will be uh, up very, very soon to follow Shoma. Go to her Facebook page, blank page to bestseller. And uh, she's always in there giving some helpful tips. And if you would like to come and join my book writing course, mine is best for those doing nonfiction. If you want to create um, information or education type books, sarahcorn.com forward slash book challenge. And I take you through the process to create and launch your book on Amazon in just 30 days. From both of us, thank you. Keep writing, keep creating, keep sharing, because every time you do, you have the potential to not just change somebody's life, but also to save it. Thank you very much. And we'll see you all soon. Bye for now. Thank you. Thanks.